Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. A very short video here um, on a Commodore 64 PLA. I'm going to try and make one of these PLAs uh, a substitute out of 27C512. So I've got the chip there. I've just quickly thrown a bit of tape on there. I'll label that up properly later. Um, you need a couple of sockets um, of the same size. I forget what size these are. Is it 28-pin, uh, 28-pin um, sockets? And as you can see, what you do is you use one of these um, wire put some wires to some of the other pins you know so it's like you can see it sort of laid out here you've got the socket um, one socket on top of the other and just one or two of the traces are rerouted so it's like four one two three four wires um, and then hopefully you should be able to just plug it in and it should work um, it's not guaranteed to cover uh, you know work 100 percent um, there are one or two things like the Epic's fast load cart that probably won't work with it. Just the same as with the Super PLA and some of those things. This might be more likely to work actually. This might, if it does work, it's probably going to be 100%. Um, it's all about the timing of the speed of this chip. Now, the, one, the only ones I've got here are some Dash 12s, which are 120 nanoseconds, which is probably too slow from memory. And I didn't mention it briefly in one of the previous videos. I think it's going to be 45 nanoseconds um, or faster. Um, so that ultimately is going to dictate whether this is a success or not. I suspect it's not going to work, but we've got nothing to lose really. I can, it's only going to be sockets in there. I can always reuse the sockets and I can always reuse the chip. So I thought I'll give this a go anyway. Um, if it doesn't work, I'll see if I can get source some faster um, OTP or um, programmable chips. But I'm not sure you can get them. You know, the 27C512, it's such an old package. I don't think you can get a 45 nanoseconds um, speed chip. So. Um, anyway, I'll show you once I've got the wires and things on here and we'll give it a try and see what happens. So here's a quick update part way. Um, you can see I've trimmed off some of the pins on the socket that goes to the EEPROM um, in correspondence you know, with this diagram. <coughs> um, what I'm going to do now is on the corresponding parts of this socket that goes going to go below, I'm just going to cut a really thin sliver of insulation tape and mask off the particular pins that don't want to marry up. Um, under here um, and then I'll slide this over the wires um, and the, so the wires are through the middle here and I'll just solder onto the um, the extended part of these legs here not the top thin bit but the, the top the very top parts there um, that way I should be able to minimize the length and get it all just right and I can test continuity with my meter as I'm going along um, but the main thing is to isolate here because even though the solder is quite low profile on these when the sockets push right on it will if you're not careful, make a connection. That's why I just want to isolate the individual pins with a bit of masking tape up the sides um, and just over the actual individual pin width. There you go. So not particularly elegant, but you can see I've masked off the one or two pins there that I don't want. Um, I think there's another one to do, actually. Yeah, there's one on this side here. So I just need to do the final one over here, um, and then I can start to join it all up. So I've completed the adapter now. Um, you can see the four wires there just joined up onto the sides. Um, of the tops of the pins there. Um, so I can remove the EEPROM, no problem, I can reuse this, you know, just change the EEPROM out. It's a good job because this EEPROM is too slow. If I connect this up um, and show you how it's behaving, um, you'll see it's very hard to get it to come on actually, but you can get it. Oh, there you go, it's come straight on, but look at the bytes 2047 bytes free. Um, now there's a chance my wiring's not quite right, but the fact is very hard to get it to come on at all. Um, it's very glitchy. Makes me think you watch just watching now probably freak out. No, it's not doing just now. It was before the graphics. There you go. It's, there you go. It's freaked out. Um, it's not fast enough. Um, so I've ordered some OTP parts, some 45, 45 nanoseconds speed um, chips, um, and a bunch from China, similar ones, OTPs. So I'll uh, update this in a second um, by the magic of YouTube, I guess. You know, for me it's going to be a week or so. I think waiting for parts now, but. Um, let's just try it with an OTP chip. What is interesting, even with that EEPROM, actually boots from car okay, um, with no issues at all. So it's like there's a, a time independency there on the basic or kernel or something, I don't know, but when you boot from cards, you don't get any issues at all. That's very interesting. Anyway, I'll report back in a minute when I've got the OTP chip. Okay, well, this is a few days later here. Um, I've got one of these Atmel, uh, I can't read the bloody part number on the top, it's something like AT27C512R, um, it's an OTP, 45 nanoseconds um, speed there, um, and this I've now got working with a cap, um, 
You can see those bats coming out there, that's fine, it's because I've not got the loop backs. Now previously, um, just as default with that chip in there, um, I was getting RAM problems um, consistently, every single time you get RAM, you know, unusual amounts of RAM reported in BASIC when you first switched it on. Um, but after some experimentation, um, I found that putting a cap on the CAS RAM line makes this better. Um, and it's not just, I've, I didn't sort of, you know, straight away go, oh, it's the CAS RAM line, you know, and just work it out myself. I did some research. Um, so I've been looking at various postings and things and um, articles about the PLA, um, how it works, and some of the problems with using EPROMs and OTP type ROMs like this. Um, and it seems like the one of the fundamental problems with the PLA is it surrounds the CAS RAM um, pin. Um, it's used to generate the uh, CAS um, delay for the RAM, uh, the DRAM on these. Um, I think Commodore in the early revisions even put some sort of delay circuit or something on there, um, a resistor capacitor um, on the very, very, very early revisions to, to, to add the delay there. Um, but the PLA, you know, they actually, it actually takes care of that. And I also read another article about the PLA when it was when they actually decapped it and had a look inside. And there was something, some interesting point there that related to the Kazram pin. And it's, I think it said something like there was these 82 picofarads of capacitance loading that pin down to start with. Um, so that's the way they've designed it. So it's done, you know, there is a deliberate delay engineered into the PLA there. Um, just messing around with it, actually just touching. I just actually don't touch the cap so you can see we've got some bads reported back. So I'll just rerun that again and we'll just leave it running a few cycles um, just to make sure it is okay. But I think that's just me interfering with the capacitor. Just the slightest uh, effect, you know, uh, you know, in capacitance there on that Kazram um, pin makes a huge difference to the timing um, for the DRAM. So you do get problems, but that's only if you, let's say, if you interfere with the capacitor. But what I've got here at the moment is a 68 picofarad cap. Um, I tried 47, it was a lot better, still a little bit glitchy, occasional RAM issues. Changed it to 68 picofarads, and it's been rock solid. Yeah, so I've played tons of games and things on this and various, done all sorts of different types of tests and things. And uh, it's pretty rock solid, um, I have to admit. On this particular revision board I've got, you know, using one of these um, Atmel um, AT27C512Rs with a 68 picofarad cap on the Kazram pin to ground, it's pretty stable. It's, it's pretty solid, really. I could use this. Um, as a working machine if I wanted to. Um, the display is a bit fuzzy there, it needs to recap this one, it's the modular, you know, there's obviously some caps in there, you can see blurriness there on the dark blue text and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll leave that running for a bunch of cycles now, um, and then I'll show you, um, after it's got to about 10 or 20 or something, I'll, I'll just give you a quick glimpse just, just to show it's actually been consistent over a period of time, and then we'll just load a couple of games up on it, but I mean, I've played a good 50 or 60 games, um, over about two or three hours and I've not had a single problem at all. Yeah, so it is one of these things you can sort of have a go at doing it yourself really. If you want, to, if you need a new PLA, get yourself one of these um, OTP chips, something like an AT27C512R um, and then just get yourself some, um, you know, caps, um, ceramic or something like I've used there, a 68 picofarad, um, maybe some different values, because it might not be the same, it's going to be roughly the same you would think. Um, it, it all relates to the speed of this chip, because it's 45 nanoseconds, and I think the original was something like, it was, it was rated like 80 or something, the original PLA. I've read it's, I've read somewhere, someone was saying it was 90, I don't think it's 90, because I read somewhere else saying it was 80, and I, I believe the other source. And, um, response times of sort of 80 nanoseconds versus 45 it's going to respond in too quickly when certainly when it comes to that cas ramp in as i say you know i said earlier the fact that they built in an intentional delay there on the cas ramp in you need to replicate that anyway i think you could be lucky you could get a, a chip that's exactly 80 nanoseconds or 90 nanoseconds and it, it, you might might be all right you might not need a cap because i've seen you know articles out there that suggest that there are many instances where you don't need a cap but um there's also an awful lot of articles out there about these uh, substitute PLAs that suggest that they don't work very well and you get all sorts of issues. Um, I've not come across any yet with this, but I mean, I did prior to adding that cap, so. I thought it'd be a good test actually to run this in my main system for a while, uh, which is a slightly different board revision. So the PLA is in there now, um, and as you can see, it's working. 
it's working fine. So, I mean, you know, I'll load some games, uh, let's just load. Uh, fantastic music on this game, seriously it is. Yeah, so as you can see, that's working. Substitute PLA. No issues at all. Interesting to know your experiences. Are there any particular games or carts or anything you're aware of that can struggle with some of these substitute PLAs? Um, just to give me a bit of an opportunity to test this out. Because what's good about this, I mean, if this does work, these uh, OTP um, Atmelt chips, there's quite a few of them around. Um, it's a good sort of DIY solution by the looks of things. It saves you the 15 to 16 euros or whatever it is for a Super PLA 3, um, although I've got no doubt you're going to get a better compatibility with one of those. I have yet to find any compatibility issues with this approach. Um, certainly for the two 64 revisions I've got here, it's not going to be consistent through different board revisions. You might, you know, if you try this yourself, you might have more issues. Um, like I say, first I've got this, I think. I don't think I've ever been off the first level. Oh, grenade. How many? They just keep coming forever. Uh, I knew I was going to die. And it makes you do it all again, you're probably kidding me. Let's just try something else. Bit of ghosts and goblins. Yeah, I'd call that a success. Uh, yeah, I've tested a ton of stuff on this, and uh, just I can't find any issues. So, like I say, if you're aware of any PLA issues with certain games and things like that, things you might want me to test, whether it's a demo or whatever, please give me a shout in the, the you know in the comments below, and uh, I'll run that through here and just test it against this uh, Atmel chip. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.